Reading Star Wars. Welcome to the Outer Rim. I'm coming in a little late to today's discussion. Um, the first person I saw talking about this was Stephanie Janicek last week, and she left a link on her channel to this article. But since then, I have seen a lot of other people talking about it. I would have gotten to this sooner, but life gets in the way, and today is the day. So We all know that Colin Trevorrow was fired from directing Episode 9 quite a while ago now, but none of us has ever been clear as to why he was fired. Until recently. Now, most of what uh, we're going to be discussing has already been labeled by pretty much everybody as rumor. So with that in mind, I'm going to just give you an idea of what I think about this as a rumor. What I think is absolutely as close to 99% true as can possibly be. And then at the end, maybe we'll discuss a little, bit, uh, a little bit of what maybe we can't confirm. So the title of this article is Star Wars Rumor. Colin Trevorrow's Episode 9 would have been epic. Following J.J. Abrams on Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and Ryan Johnson on Star Wars The Last Jedi, originally Colin Trevorrow was supposed to direct Episode 9. The reason officially cited for Colin Trevorrow leaving Star Wars Episode 9 was due to creative differences. Now, insights as to the creative differences look to have become known, which sounds as if Colin Trevorrow's ideas for Luke Skywalker and Star Wars butted heads with Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy. Enter Mark Hamill. If you recall, Mark Hamill disagreed with Ryan Johnson's portrayal of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Hamill even went so far as to publicly state that he is not my Luke Skywalker, which is pretty huge. Okay, so right off the bat, this article is setting up the premise for this quote-unquote rumor pretty well. And I'm just going to state right off that Mark Hamill is pretty much the linchpin that unravels the entire story. Well, I won't say the entire story, but I'd say a very large part of it anyway. So right now, I think all the pivotal players are on the board. You have Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, Colin Trevorrow, and Mark Hamill. I said to Ryan, I said, Jedis don't give up. I mean, even if he had a problem, he would uh, maybe take a year to try and regroup. But if he made a mistake, he would try and right that wrong. So right there, we had a fundamental difference. But it's not my story anymore. It's somebody else's story. And Ryan needed me to be a certain way to make the ending effective. That's the crux of my problem. Luke would never say that. I'm sorry. Well, in this version, see, I'm talking about this, the George Lucas Star Wars. This is the next generation of Star Wars. So I almost had to think of Luke as another character. Uh, maybe he's Jake Skywalker. He's not my Luke Skywalker. But I had to do what Ryan wanted me to do because it, it serves the story well. But uh, listen, I still haven't accepted it completely. But it's only a movie. I hope people like it. I hope they don't get upset. And I came to really believe that Ryan was the exact man that they needed for this job. Mark Hamill believed that Ryan Johnson was hurting the film, and it's no wonder. If he's saying Luke Skywalker would, not, would never say this, Mark Hamill's of the opinion that Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, is fan fiction. At least at that point. He'd never say that today, but that's basically what he was saying. But let's get back to the article real quick. Mark Hamill even revealed the original J.J. Abrams ending to Star Wars The Force Awakens was changed at the request of Lucasfilm, a.k.a. Kathleen Kennedy. It had Luke Skywalker in an epic moment using the Force with boulders flying around him. However, as Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy wanted to essentially castrate Luke Skywalker in Star Wars The Last Jedi, Luke couldn't be shown using the Force. And I'd say that that word castrate is very appropriately used in this sense. What do we know Luke Skywalker for? Being a Jedi. And basically they were not going to allow him to be a Jedi in this film. So he's utterly castrated, you know. He has no place anywhere. I mean, you can say he's a man named Luke Skywalker, the son of Darth Vader and the, the brother of uh, Princess Leia. But other than that, he's nothing but a hermit, maybe. I mean, taking such a famous character and turning him into nothing was a dumb move. So, of course, Mark Hamill is going to be... Uh, not just upset, but concerned with the reception to the film. But let's go on and, and read Mark's quote here. When we were doing The Force Awakens, Ryan said, we might have boulders floating to show your Force emanating. So I was led to believe that I still had the Force and it was really strong in me, Hamill said. 
When I read The Last Jedi before The Force Awakens came out, I said, what? And called J.J. Abrams or Ryan Johnson to say, are you guys aware of this? Have you seen a cut? Is there floating boulders? And they said, no, we caught that and we worked it all out. Now, I remember hearing something about this back in 2013, 14, sometime around there. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but it was before The Force Awakens. And I just remember watching uh, AMC Movie Talk, John Campy and all of them over there, and them discussing the new trilogy. And somehow the word had gotten out that Luke Skywalker was really, really powerful, <laughs> you know? And they were talking about that. I'm like, okay, that's going to be cool. I wonder what that's going to be like and everything. And all of a sudden, episode one comes out. He's not in the movie. Uh, but you're still. I was still holding on to this idea that when he actually does get a chance to play a part, it's going to be significant. Unfortunately, <laughs> that wasn't the case. In fact, it was the exact opposite. His entire role, the entire role of his character was in his character purposefully being insignificant. <laughs> and so now we kind of get a, a picture of not only Mark Hamill's concerns, but what would undoubtedly be Colin Trevorrow's concerns. Listen, uh, Kathleen Kennedy uh, is the head of Lucasfilm, and she's going to be the head of Lucasfilm for quite a while unless something drastic happens, right? So she she lives in that house, she's making that house her own, and it is what she wants it to be. Colin Trevorrow doesn't have that pers that same perspective. After Star Wars Episode Nine, he would have to go on to other things, and he has his own career to worry about. Um, Ryan Johnson probably had assurances from Kathleen Kennedy that he could work at Lucasfilm for as long as he wanted. So he didn't have too much to worry about. But no one who doesn't have those kind of assurances wants to work with garbage. A Hollywood career is not something that just falls out of the sky. A lot goes into making one. You have to have connections, you have to have skill, you have to have, you know, talent. You have to have all kinds of things, and you have to be a hard worker. To throw that away on the whims of this person, Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson, uh... <laughs> I am of the mind that maybe he wasn't even fired. Maybe he just walked off. But I'm getting a little ahead of, ahead of myself here. Um, so the per, the article goes on to say, Now in an interview with Mark Hamill that has surfaced, Hamill says he was on board with what Colin Trevorrow originally intended to happen with Luke in Episode 9. So no doubt Luke was going to be in Episode 9 as far as Colin Trevorrow was concerned, and Mark Hamill was completely on board with that. Now, he may still be in Episode 9, despite what Ryan Johnson did with him. So, we can't conclude that Colin Trevorrow was fired just because he wanted Mark Hamill in the movie. That's the first point that we can be 100% sure of. So, what we can deduce from this is that the only real difference between what Ryan Johnson wanted and what Colin Trevorrow wanted was what would be possible with Luke's character. If he's alive, anything is possible that you, you want to do with him. If he's not alive, well, then he can show up as an apparition, and maybe he can, you know, strike a tree with lightning or something like that. The point is, if he's not alive, his role is going to be extremely limited. I don't know what the plans for Episode Nine are, but I do know that this current trilogy is a circus, and you can't fix Star Wars with Episode Nine. Mark goes on to say, the changes in directors have been hard for me because I admire Phil so much. I admire Chris so much. I admire Colin and their body of work. But again, it's got to be real difficult to come to a meeting of minds on something this massive. Uh, I had discussions with Colin, and I was very excited because we were on the same page in terms of uh, where we wanted to go and how we wanted to see Luke in a way we've never seen him, even in, in this current uh, version. But... I don't know what went on. I don't want to know because there's no upside to that story. I mean, I like all those people. I like Kathy and I like Lawrence Kasdan and all the people that were involved in that decision. But sometimes ignorance is bliss. And they don't tell me anything. Obviously, if Mark Hamill is not on board with what Ryan Johnson was doing in Star Wars The Last Jedi with Luke, but did like what Colin Trevorrow, who was removed, was going to do with Luke in Star Wars Episode Nine, 
we can guess that Luke was going to survive The Last Jedi prior to Ryan Johnson doing whatever he did and that it would have been a lot better than what happened with Luke in The Last Jedi. From Mark Hamill offering they changed the ending to Star Wars The Force Awakens, it seems as if Hamill signed on without knowing the whole story. While what Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy did with Luke in Star Wars The Last Jedi was downright awful, on the bright side, at least it got Mark Hamill back together one last time with Carrie Fisher. What a terrible way to get them back together, though. I mean, <laughs> basically put them out to pasture and call them useless, but they're together while you're saying it about them. I mean, the way they've structured this whole thing around the uh, original three characters. Um, Han Solo dies in, at the end of uh, The Force Awakens. Luke Skywalker dies at the end of The Last Jedi. It's obvious that Carrie Fisher was supposed to have a stupid death at the end of Episode Nine. And the, my biggest problem with that is it, it's like you're lining ducks up in a row to shoot them, you know? It's so fake <laughs> and contrived. You don't have to make me feel like I'm in there watching something that's fake. I, I can't immerse myself into something that is so obviously advertising to me that it is bullshit. Had Luke been able to survive uh, Episode Eight, and... Maybe him and Carrie Fisher go out together in episode nine. That would have been more organic, maybe. And I wouldn't have felt like, okay, this is just some systematically uh, put together agenda to discredit the original Star Wars movies, everything that George Lucas did, uh, and crap all over the original characters whom people love so much, probably because they love them so much. Um, and then introduce us to these other people who we're supposed to attach ourselves to just as much. There's more to this article. I'm not going to read it here, but I will leave a link in the description box below. Basically, I'm going to close this out just by saying that what we can be definitely positive of is that Mark Hamill's character, Luke Skywalker, was supposed to survive into Episode 9 as far as Colin Trevorrow wanted. And this is part of the reason why he won't be working on Episode 9. I mean, what Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy did was give him a piece of garbage and say, you know, make a billion dollar movie out of this. And he said no. <laughs> what we can't be sure of is if that was the only thing, if there was more to this. What was done to Luke Skywalker was not an accident. It's not something that just was, you know, a by the way, let's do this maybe. It was something like an agenda. We're definitely going to do this. We have to do this. This is what's going to happen. And what seals the deal is the fact that Mark Hamill was on the side of the guy who is no longer on the project. And he was basically against the opinions of the people who remain involved with Star Wars. Now, if Luke Skywalker was a throwaway character that is really kind of unimportant, then I would say, fine, maybe I'm wrong. But since he's never been a throwaway character, like Disney would, would have everyone believe that he actually is, he's a monumentally large character. I would go so far as to say that the original three characters were so large that Disney was af afraid of them, <laughs> to tell you the truth. That's the way they behave towards those characters. You don't throw away those characters like so much garbage unless you're afraid of them. And if you're against that and you end up getting pulled off the movie, I don't think we need to speculate as to what happened or why you were pulled off the movie. It's pretty clear. The one thing we can speculate about is whether or not there were other things that were involved alongside this so as far as I'm concerned this isn't much of a rumor I would say it's probably 99% true but tell me what you guys think in the discussion below like subscribe hit the notification bell and as always if you're listening you are the new rebel 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 are the new rebel